All right, so welcome back to Hardcore Tech. Today we're going to talk about how to check timing with a Holly EFI, specifically the Holly Terminator X. So we'll just dig right in. We're going to show you the laptop first, then I'll take you into the dyno uh, room, and we'll go ahead and show you how to do that on the handheld. Okay, so the first thing that we would do is basically turn on our ignition switch. At the top of the screen here, there's something called USB link. We're going to click that, and this box here, we can just check OK. Now you'll notice it says online. That means we're connected with the ECU in real time. We're going to start the engine, and when the engine's running, we're going to go to this here, whoops, this here sync menu. There's a drop down list. We'll scroll down to enable static timing check. We're going to click that. In this box, we're going to enter a value. You see that we have 32 entered. That's our maximum timing we typically run in a lot of our street engines. So we're going to select 32 and then we'll go over here and we will hit set. Okay? And when you're done, so you'll notice it has a message. The static timing has been set. You can now go out to the engine and point your light at the balancer and make sure it reads what we're commanding here. I'll show you why we command 32. Also when you're done you'll just click clear and it will tell you that it's been cleared. So this is how you do it on the laptop. Once again get online and then do our sync menu. I'll show you if you were not online it says USB link. We do our drop down you'll notice it's grayed out. It will not let you do it unless you're online and linked up in real time. So now let's go out to the engine and I'll show you how to do this on the handheld. All right, so we've got our little handheld monitor and tuning uh, device here. So what we're going to do, we're on the home screen. We're going to hit tuning. We're going to go to system. And we're going to go to ignition setup. Notice over here it says static timing. We'll click that. Same thing here. We're going to go ahead and enter the value that we want. We recommend 32. We'll hold, hit set. You'll see it says static timing is set. When we're done checking it, we're going to go ahead and clear it. So that's how you do it on the handheld. All right, so one of the things that we didn't talk about yet was one other setting on the timing. So obviously we can go out to the engine as we did, point the light at it at 32, and you'll notice we did rev it up uh, and it stayed on 32. If it does not stay on 32, and when you rev it up it retards or it advances, the other parameter is called inductive delay. So we'll want to adjust that. So let's just say if the uh, if the timing is retarding we're gonna up our number because we want more timing basically. If it's uh, it overly advancing then we're gonna lower the number. So it just kinda think about uh, you got too much timing, lower the number. We need less or we need more if that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. So come up here take a look at the screen and I'll show you how we get into that parameter. Okay, so uh, when we're wanting to go into our inductive delay setting, you'll have to have the key off. So, of course, we don't see that we're online up here, up at the top. So we'll go to our picture of our ECU. We'll click on it. And we'll go over here to ignition parameters. We'll click on that. And you'll notice in this top right corner, inductive delay. So I'm purposely going to knock this down to about 75 and what we're going to go ahead and do I'll flip the ignition on and when we USB link you'll see the system failed normally that's never going to fail unless you make a change to the system which we did system parameters we changed the ignition so we're going to want to send that info to the ECU 
Now, anytime that you're doing something timing-wise, you're changing, it asks you to requ or requires you to cycle the ignition again. So we'll go ahead and cycle our ignition one more time. Everything passed. We're good to go. So we're going to fire it up again, go out there and show you the effect of having a lower inductive delay. All right, so as you've seen, it was a very small amount, and I know the timing light's hard to see kind of on video, but as we increase the engine RPM, you notice the timing mark retarding getting away from our timing pointer. It was a small amount and actually a rather large adjustment. That, I'm gonna say it was about somewhere into the five degree range. So we, we set it from 150 to 75. So it retarded as we uh, rev the engine up. But what you did notice is at idle, it was still the 32 we were commanding. So it's very, very important you rev that motor up and then adjust the inductive delay accordingly. Now, if you purchased an engine from us, that will have already been done. But for some reason, when we come off the engine dyno, we could go out into our own car shop. We still always double check timing, and sometimes that inductive delay needs to be changed. It could just be that the wiring in the car, it's a signal delay is what it is. So we still want to double check it in the car. This brings me to the conclusion that no matter what, whether you bought an engine from us or anybody else, is always double check timing. And that includes pointing the light at it at idle, as well as revving it up to make sure that it is basically you're viewing the commanded timing throughout the entire RPM range. This is a must and very, very important. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.